Hey, what's up guys and gals? Allow me to introduce myself. My name is A-Hood. A-what? A-Hood. That's right, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I already know. You've never heard of me. I get that all the time. Yeah, I know, I'm not King David, okay? I'm not, you know, Moses or whatever. I'm, I'm a guy that like nobody ever knows my story. But that's exactly why I'm here today, because I know that I might not be much to look at, but it doesn't take much for God to change everything. You see, when I was just a boy, everybody made fun of me. You see, the reason they made fun of me was because I was from the tribe of Benjamin. That might not mean much to you, but the name Benjamin means son of my right hand. And, and, and my family, Y'all, they were the mightiest warriors. If you were from my tribe and my family, they would put us at the front line of the battle. And the, the, you know, the other cool thing about the tribe of Benjamin was that all of my family learned how to use a sword with both hands. That's right, so, so look, if you were gonna fight us, you had to dodge not one sword, you had to dodge two swords. One sword in the left hand and one sword in the right hand. And even though I was proud to be a part of the family of tough guys, that wasn't really who I was. You see, the Bible calls me the man left-handed. Kids, are, is there any of y'all out there that are left-handed, that like you write with your left hand? Oh, okay, yeah, I see you, I see you. Well, okay, well, look, well, for me, it wasn't just that using my left hand felt right and felt natural. It wasn't just that I wrote with my left hand or fought left-handed or threw a baseball left-handed because it was a choice. I was left-handed because I had a crippled right hand. My right hand didn't work. So I was a Benjamite, the son of my right hand, and my right hand was broken. It didn't work. So while everybody else could war and fight with two hands, I could only fight with one hand. I was half of the warrior of all my brothers and sisters. And to make things worse, I lived in a time where we had lost a battle and we were being bullied by the king of another nation. I wanted to change things. I wanted to rise up and fight, but I was just too injured. And I was too weak. Kids, this was a terrible and wicked king, and his name was Eglon of the Moabites. The Bible said that he was a big old fat man, and he was always stuffing his face with all kinds of food while we in Israel were starving to death. One thing this mean old fat king told us was that every year we would have to come and bring him gifts. Like, I mean, it wasn't even his birthday. It, and even though my brothers and sisters were mighty warriors, they were too afraid to stand up to Eglon too. When they would approach his throne, they would fight over who would have to present the gifts to him because nobody wanted to stand before Eglon. Every time, Eglon would act like a big meanie. And, and, and this time, it was my turn to deliver the gift. So we loaded up the wagons and we hauled all the food and the gold and the snacks and treasures all the way up to the land of Moab, all the way up to Eglon's palace. And, and when it was time for us to approach the throne of Eglon, I thought about how this king had been so cruel to us. And, and I thought about all the houses and, that he burned down and all the families that he destroyed. And, and kids, even though I was weak, I felt a boldness rise up in me. It started in my feet, this burning sensation. And I'm like, he's not going to get away with this anymore. I knew it was time for somebody to stand up and fight King Eglon. If nobody else was going to do it, old lefty here, I'll do it. So I came in. I bowed to show my respect. And I asked Eglon to come a little closer. I told him, I've got a message to you from the Lord. 
that old mean king, he snorted and laughed and he came close. You see, since I was a crippled little guy, since I was half the man that all the other warriors were, nobody ever expected me to be dangerous. But whenever he leaned close, I took my one good hand and I grabbed my sword and I defeated the king with one hand. That's right, kids. I had my sword up in Eglon's belly. And you know what? I tried to pull the sword out and he was so fat that his belly closed up on my sword. That was my favorite sword. And I left it in there and then I turned it and I, uh-oh, I started smelling something. Kids, when I stabbed him, Eglon pooped himself. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, look, needless to say, we took off away from the palace and Eglon's servants didn't go in to check on the king for a long time. You know why? Because they were just as scared of him as we were. And, 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 but, but when they did go and check on him, they realized that he was dead. And by that time, the news of my victory had spread all the way across Israel. And with me at the lead, we all joined together and rode into battle. And that day, we were freed from King Eglon and from the nation of Moab. We were finally free again. Well, howdy there, possum pals. It's me, your favorite brother and sister. That's right. Listen, uh, we're right here in the middle of things. It was me and my brother and my sister and my, well, he kind of became our other brother if you didn't see till the end, you know what I'm saying? Hold on a minute, please. Oh, got to look good out there for the young ladies. Yes, I'm sir. Anyways, <clears throat> we were out there in the middle of the things just doing our thing and we sure did need the good Lord by our oh, excuse me again hi there okay um and we were just there and we were united with the Lord and we were just and we got a new brother that's right now when we got this young brother of ours it came to a verse to my head it went a little something like this each time he said my grace is all you need my power works best in weakness. You see, we was weak. There was three, and then we was four. It was like the musketeer. Oh, I'm just now putting it together. Wow. Okay, anyways, I get distracted easily. Here we go again. We're going to try it. I want you to repeat after me. Each time he said, Each time he said, My grace is all you need. My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. My power works best in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. Now listen there, possum pals. I'm giving it all I got on this end. What are y'all doing over there? Hmm? Where's your, you got showing me some weakness. Let's put a little oomph in there. Oh, excuse me. How you doing, Petunia? All right, all right. Hey, 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 easy there, possum pals. Okay, here we go, let's try it again. Each time he said. Each time he said. You gotta hold it out there a little bit like I do there. My grace is all you need. My grace is all you need. There you go, my power works best in weakness. My power works best in weakness. Oh, y'all are so good. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. Woo, wee, hot dog, hot diggity dog. I believe we can do it together. Well, howdy, ma'am. All right, kids. Just like always, I got some main points. These are things that I want to make sure that you remember from this lesson. Main point number one is this. You might be small and your enemy might be big, but God is bigger. Kids, 
as small as you might be or as small as you might feel, that does not limit your God. You being small does not make your God small. And your enemy seems to be big. But remember, whenever your enemy seems to be big, all we gotta do is get God to stand next to him and you realize just how small he is. King Eglon, he seemed like somebody that nobody could defeat. But me, a little guy with a crippled hand, God can use me and kids, he can use you too. Main point number two is this, if you stand up against the enemy, others will follow and do the same. Kids, I, I was alone whenever I stood there. I was alone whenever I hatched this plan and whenever I decided to take matters into my own hands and attack the bad guy, I, I was by myself. But because I was brave enough to attack the king by myself, because I was strong enough to, you know, within myself, even knowing, knowing my weakness, knowing my problem, my, my crippled hand, whenever everybody else saw that somebody had finally stood up for what was right, they joined in and they did the same thing. Kids, don't worry if it seems like you're the only one trying to do what's right. Before long, the rest of them will see you and they will join you. You got to make sure that you don't join in with the people that are doing bad just because it's a bigger crowd. You can create a big crowd doing the right thing. Lastly, main point number three, God knows how to use your weaknesses. Growing up, like I said, they made fun of me. I couldn't fight with both hands. I can only fight with one. But kids, the point here is that I gave God what I did have. He's not asking me to use my right hand. He's not asking me to do something that, that I can't possibly do. He's, he's asking me to do what I can do. And what I can do is fight with my left hand. And so kids, even if you feel like you're half the person of somebody else, even if you feel like you don't have as much as the person sitting across from you, even if you feel like you didn't get a fair shake in life, God is only asking you for what you can do, and then He will take care of what you cannot do. And that leads us to our memory verse. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9, and it says, Each time He said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. God is looking at your weaknesses and He's not scared by them. He's excited about them because your weaknesses are the very place that God can show up and show Himself mighty. Let's pray. Lord, I love you and I thank you for this lesson, for this story. I pray, God, that these kids would apply what they have heard. I pray, God, that, that they would not be intimidated by the enemy. And I pray that they would rise up against the enemy, Lord, against the enemy of their family, Lord, against the enemy of their school. Let them rise up in prayer and in praise and in faith. And I pray, God, that as they are bold enough to do that, that you would send others to stand by their side. And Lord, we know that you plan on these kids having the victory. And somebody say it with me, in Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you next time for another story.